أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أذكروني أذكركم واشكروني ولا تكفرون يا أيها الذين آمنوا استعينوا بالصبر والصلاة إن الله مع الصابرين ولا تقولوا لمن يقتل في سبيل الله أموات بل أحياء ولكن لا تشعرون آمنت بالله صدق الله العظيم Oh, 
نام ہوں مجھے عشق ہے تو خدا سے ہے مجھے عشق ہے تو رسول سے یہ کرم ہی سارا بطول کا میرے منہ سے آئے میں ہے کسدا جو میں نام لو تیرا جو مکے میں تو پنج دن کا غلام ہوں میں تو پنج دن کا غلام ہوں ہوا کے ستن سے وہ سر جدا جہاں عشق ہو وہی کربلا میری بات انہی کی بات ہے میرے سامنے وہی ذات ہے وہی جن کو شیر خدا کہے جن باب صلی علی کہے وہی جن کو آل نبی کہے وہی جن کو ذات علی کہے وہی پخت ہے میں تو خام ہوں میں تو پنج دن کا غلام ہوں میں تو پنج دن کا غلام ہوں میں غلام ابن غلام ہوں میں غلام ابن غلام ہوں میں تو پنج دن کا غلام ہوں میں تو پنج دن کا غلام ہوں نحمد ہو و نسلی و نسلم علی رسوله الكریم اما بعد فاعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ان الذین قالوا ربنا اللہ ثم استقاموا تتنزل علیہم الملائکت والروح اللہ تخافوا ولا تحزنوا و ابشروا بالجنت اللتی کنتم توعدون صدق اللہ العظیم وصدق رسوله النبی الامین المختار الكریم ونحن على ذالک لمن الشاہدین والشاکرین والحمد لله رب العالمین انتہائی محترم اور مکرم میرے بزرگو نوجوان ساتھیو عزت معاب میری ماو اور بہنو آئیے اپنے معمول کے مطابق آقا نامدار ہم سب کے تاجدار حضور خاتم المرسلین رحمت اللہ العالمین صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی بارگاہ میں اپنی غلامی کا ثبوت دیتے ہوئے باواز بلند درود پاک کا حدیعہ پیش کریں اور پڑھیں اللہم صلی علی سیدنا و شفیعنا و مولانا محمد و آلہ و صحبہ و بارک و سلم صلاة و سلام علیک یا سیدی یا حبیبی یا رسول اللہ صلی اللہ تعالی علیہ وسلم الحمدللہ we are in the house of Allah سبحانہ وتعالی in one of the most blessed day the day of Ashura the day which is also known as the Shahadat day and the day of martyrdom of حضرت سیدنا امام علی بقام امام حسین the grandson of رسول اللہ صلی اللہ تعالی علیہ وسلم for past nine programs we have discussed several personalities including the خلفائی اربعہ and the households of رسول اللہ صلی اللہ تعالی علیہ وسلم and yesterday we were discussing the migration of حضرت مسلم بن عقیل who was the representative of حضرت سیدنا امام حسین رضی اللہ تعالیٰ who was sent to Kufa to check if everything 
that Kufis are saying they are true in their words, the letters they have written to Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Ali Maqam, Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu, inviting, inviting him to the, to the city of Kufa so he can lead those people against Yazid. Hazrat Muslim bin Akhil radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he reached to Kufa and approximately 12,000 Kufis they took the bay'ah and allegiance on the hands of Hazrat Muslim bin Aqil in the name of Sayyidina Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu. However, we come to know that by the end, almost within a week, every single person left Hazrat Muslim bin Aqil radiallahu ta'ala anhu alone. The person who was invited, the person who was representing Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was left alone in the city of Kufa. There was no door which was open for him and there was an old lady Tawa who invited him in her house. That night, Hurt Muslim bin Aqil radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he stayed in the house of Tawa. But Tawa's son, he was with Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad and he was somebody who was close to them. When he saw his mother going in certain room time and time again, so he asked her that who is staying in our house? Tawa did not know that her son is with the enemies of Ahlul Bayt. She did not know that if I informed him about Hazrat Muslim bin Aqil radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that would be danger on the life of Hazrat Muslim bin Aqil. So she told him that we are lucky enough to have the representative of Hazrat Sina Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu in our house and I'm hosting him. Her son could not wait for the morning. As soon as dawn broke, he went to Ibn Ziyad and he informed the people of Ibn Ziyad that Muslim bin Aqil is in my house. Allah. Ibn Ziyad, he sent a group of people armed to capture Hurt Muslim bin Aqil radiallahu ta'ala. However, Hurt Sayyidina Muslim, he was a brave person. He would not give up just like that. When he came in front of them, there was a fight. And those people, they thought that if we try and fight this one single person of ahl Bayt, we will not be able to win. So what they did, they tricked him. They said, we giving you aman. In Arab, when they say aman, aman mean there will be no fight. And the person who gives aman, he is responsible for the safety of that person who has been given the aman. Hayat Muslim bin Aqil radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when he was given the aman and he was told, why don't you go to Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad and sow things between you and Ubaidullah. Hayat Muslim bin Aqil radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was taken. When they, when they were taking Hayat Muslim bin Aqil, the first thing they did, the sword that he had, it was taken away. Now he knew that the aman that's been given to me, and the promise of safety that's been given to me, it was a false promise. They have betrayed Hazrat Muslim bin Aqil radiallahu ta'ala anhu. When he reached Ibn Ziyad, they had a dis discussion and disagreement and Ibn Ziyad commanded his people to take Hazrat Muslim bin Aqil on the balcony and when he reaches to balcony, then in front of everyone, kill him and slit his throat. Everybody of Kufa, those people, who invited her to Muslim bin Aqil radiallahu ta'ala anhu and directly they were inviting her to Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu. None of them had courage to stand up for the Ahli Bayt. For this grandson of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam, nobody came out to raise their voice. Her to Muslim bin Aqil radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when he reached to the balcony and he knew that this is the time when I have to give my life for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He did not bow down in front of those tyrants. He did not bow down in front of Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad who was re representing Yazid. Hurt a Muslim bin Aqil radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Oh Allah, today you are the just one and you will do justice between those people and myself who invited me and lied to me and humiliated to me 
humiliated me and now they are going to take my life. And he prayed kalima and then his, he was slaughtered in front of people in the balcony. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Not only that, not only that, Ibn Ziyad commanded that his shahadat and his death should be an example for the people of Kufa. <coughs> so nobody can stand up to help Ahl Bayt in the future. His body was disrespectfully, disrespectfully was hanging in the city of Kufa. For so many days, the body of Hurt Muslim bin Aqil was hanging next to those who supported Hurt Muslim bin Aqil, radiallahu ta'ala, and who likes of Hani ibn Urwa and other people. Now, after the shahadat of Hurt Muslim bin Aqil, radiallahu ta'ala, and who, the people of Kufa, they were very afraid. When they saw how Hurt Muslim bin Aqil was slaughtered and killed, the people of Kufa, they had left nothing in them in terms of the love of Ahlul Bayt. Everything was gone. They were afraid for their own lives. Nobody can, could claim that they support Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu. However, Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala anhu, as soon as he received the letter of Hazrat Muslim bin Aqil, he had to leave Madinatul Munawwara. He was in Makkah. He had to leave Makkatul Mukarrama. When he was preparing to leave Makkatul Mukarrama, because now it was the obligation of Imam Hussein. Because Hazrat Muslim bin Aqil wrote that there are 12,000 people from Kufa who have accepted you as your leader. They have taken the bay'ah on my hand in your name. You should come in Kufa as soon as possible. Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu when he was preparing. <coughs> the greatest Sahaba likes of Hazrat Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala Hurti Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala Hurti Jabir and Hurti Abu Sa'id Khudri these great Sahaba they came to visit and see Hurti Imam Hussein and they reminded Hurti Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala that oh grandson of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam we think that the hearts of Kufis seems to be with you but their swords does not look like they are with you they may be having carrying your love in their hearts but their souls will not support you. Do not go to Kufa. Do not leave Makkatul Mukarrama. Stay here. We will defend you. If you stay in Masjid Haram, they won't come to attack on you. We'll defend you. However, Hayat Sayyidina Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala anhu, because of the letter that he received from Hayat Muslim bin Aqil, he decided that he has to go and he has to listen to the people of Kufa who have invited him in their city. It was the time of Zulhaj. Now imagine at the time when people are coming to Haramain, at the time when people are preparing for Hajj and visit the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This grandson of Rasulullah he had to leave the, city, leave the city of Makkah at that time. It was third of Zulhaj. 60, 60th Hijri and he was leaving Makkatul Mukarrama with Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala anhu as many people say that this was the political battle Hazrat Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala anhu he fought against Yazid because they, they had some political misunderstanding now if you look at who was in the Qafila and those who were traveling with Sayyidina Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu, does it look like that they were going for a battle? I will mention some of their names. That how many people were with Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala? With Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Hussein, three of his own sons. Hazrat Ali Ausat, who is known as Imam Zainul Abidin radiallahu ta'ala. Hazrat Ali Akbar and Hazrat Ali Asghar. Hurt Ali Akbar was merely 18 years old and Hurt Ali Asghar was approximately 6 months old baby. Who goes to battle with a baby who is 6 months old? Was the intention of Hurt Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu to fight? With Hurt Sayyidina Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu, there were two of his wives, Hurt Shaharbanu and other wife of Hurt Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And there were 
سنس آف حضرت حسن مشتبہ اینڈ سنس آف سینا علی کرم اللہ تعالیٰ وجول کریم اینڈ دی انٹائر گروپ انٹائر گروپ واز میکسیمم ایٹی ٹو پیپل انکلوڈنگ آل دی ویمن اینڈ چلڈرن ہو آر وتھ حضرت سینا امام علی مقام رضی اللہ تعالیٰ دس گروپ دی اسٹارٹ ٹو ٹریول ٹوورڈس کوفہ حضرت امام علی مقام از گوئنگ ٹو کوفہ to fulfill the duty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed upon him to serve to the deen and defend the sharia of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam. At a time, at the time when a tyrant likes of Yazid, who had no care about the sharia of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam, who had no care about the boundaries of Allah and Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam, Imam Ali Maqam had to fulfill his duty. When he reached to a place called Safa, he met a very well-known poet. His name was Firazduq. Firazduq, when he met Hrati Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala, Hrati Imam said to him, that, what is the news from Kufa? What do you say about Kufa? Now Firazduq said the same thing was Sahaba, they were saying. That Imam Ali Maqam, I'm coming from Kufa. And I can see that their hearts might be with you, but their souls are not with you. Do not go to Kufa. Hrati Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala and this is a known fact that when a shahadat is written for a person, when the death is written for a person, and wherever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written it for that person, he goes to that place. Any reason, any excuse would take that person to that place. Hrati Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala he carried on his journey to the Kufa. On his way at some point he comes to know about the shahadat of Hrati Muslim bin Aqil radiallahu ta'ala. As we know that in today's day and age if something happens in any part of the world within seconds we come to know. But that time was different. Hrati Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he comes to know about the shahadat of Hrati Muslim bin Aqil radiallahu ta'ala anhu way later. And when he hears about the shahadat of Hrati Muslim bin Aqil, the doubts that he had about the Kufis, it turns into certainty. That what Kufis, when they wrote the letters inviting and giving qasams of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Hrati Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala anhu, those very same people had martyred somebody who was representing Hrati Imam Ali Maqam, Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala. At that point, Hrati Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala, he stops everyone. All those people who were in his group, he stops everyone. And he tells them that, listen, today we come to know that Hrati Muslim bin Aqil who wrote us the letter and at the beginning he looked at the intentions of Kufis, he has been martyred. And we know that these people, they are not going to treat us well. Any of you who is willing to go back, you are free to go back. At that time, those people who were with Hadrat Sayyidina, Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala anhu, they weren't cowards. Those people who were with him, they weren't like Kufis. That when they see something good, they take part in it. When they, when they see something going against them, then they run away. Every single person in the group of Hadrati, Sayyidina Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala anhu, they stayed with him and nobody moved from Hadrati, Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala. They said, we all will travel with you. Before anything happens to you, it will be us who will give our lives and we will protect you, O grandson of Rasulullah They had seen that how much Rasulullah he loved Hrati Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala. Prophet used to kiss Hrati Imam Hussain's forehead and he used to smell them and he would tell people that these are the flowers from Jannah. Wow. How can those people move away from that Imam at the time of difficulty? Nobody said that we want to go back. All of those Ashab who were with Hayati Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala anhu, they carried on the journey. 
until first of Muharram. So they left on third of Zul Hajj, the entire month of Zul Hajj, they traveled approximately 27 to 28 days and they reached at a place which was near Karbala. It was first of Muharram. And Hati Mami Ali Maqam ta'ala who told everyone to station there. The tents were built and they stayed there. Whilst Hati Mami Ali Maqam ta'ala who and his group was that a, a group of army which was approximately 1,000 people under the command of Hur ibn Yazid they reached to Hati Mami Ali Maqam at that place. When people in the tent they heard that there is a group of army, Ghore Sawar Jisim they are coming to Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala anhu. They went out, Hazrat Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He met Hur and he asked him, that, Why are you here with 1,000 people? Hur said that I have been commanded by Ibn Ziyad, Ubaidullah Ibn Ziyad, that wherever I find you, I stop you there. I should not let you move a step ahead. Hati Imami Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala said, O oh, Hur, you know that I haven't come on my own intention. I have been invited and in a way I have been forced by the people of Kufa to fulfill my duty. And I'm going to fulfill my duty. I have nothing to do with Ibn Ziyad. I have nothing to do with Yazid. I'm only listening to the people of Kufa. And he showed him the letters, that these are the letters of people from Kufa. At that time, Hur did not say anything. And in some narration, it's been uh, said, Imam Tibri, rahmatullahi ta'ala, he writes that when Hur arrived, the first thing Hurt Imam Hussein, radiallahu ta'ala, who offered was the water. He said, give them water. All of them, they were given the water. And Hur was a, a person with good soul. When it was Namaz time, Zohar time, Asr time, they performed two Salahs. At that time, Imam Ali Maqam asked him, Are you going to pray your own Salah or you are going to pray, pray behind us? Who said, We will pray behind you. They performed Salah behind Hurt Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala and both of the Salah. However, Sayyidina Imam Ali Maqam wasn't there to stop. So the next day, they started traveling. When they started traveling, who said, Imam, I have been commanded to stop you. But he couldn't force Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala. The reason was simple. That he had a little bit of love of Ahlul Bayt in his heart. He couldn't bear in his heart to stop and say to Hazrat Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu in harsh words that he cannot move ahead. Therefore, Hur could not stop Hazrat Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala anhu. When it was 9th of Muharram. Now by the 9th of Muharram, Hayat Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he reaches very close to Karbala, which became the maqtal of Hayat Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala anhu. When he reached there, Ibn Ziyad sent another group of army and people to reinforce Hayat a Hur. When they came to Hur, they said to her, how could you not stop Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu where you found him? And he reached to this place. Now, Ibn Ziyad commanded that Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu and his group should be stopped in a field which is barren and there is no water close to them. He was stopped by Hur and those who came from Ibn Ziyad in a field called Karbala. Today, it has turned into the place where Hazrat Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala anhu is resting. When they were stopped there, Hazrat Imam Ali Maqam said, what is this place? People said this place is known as Karbala. Hazrat Imam Ali Maqam then repeated these words. He said, Hadihi Karbala'u mawda'u karbin wa bala hadha manakhu rikabina wa mahattu rihalina this place Karbala, as I mentioned previously in the hadith of Prophet والسلام, that Rasulullah والسلام, had already pointed at the place and the river Furat, Karbala and Furat both were mentioned in the hadith of Rasulullah. 
Imam Ali Maqam said, this is the place of karb and bala, difficulty and sorrow. This is the place where my people and I will be slaughtered. They knew. And when they were leaving from Makkah al Mukarramah, Sahaba knew the ahadith of Rasulullah in regards to the martyrdom of Hazrat Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala. But none of them were certain about this is the time when Hazrat Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala will be martyred. When they were stopped in Karbala finally, away from Furat, the river that was flowing next to Karbala. Ubedullah ibn Ziyad, he wrote a letter to one of his, uh, one of his uh, wazir, whose name was Amr ibn Sa'ad. Now, Amr ibn Sa'ad, he was son of Sahabi, Harate Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu ta'ala. Harate Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu ta'ala, one of the greatest Sahabi, and he served his entire life to Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam. But he was, his son, Amr, was serving to Yazid and Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. Now, the letter was written to him because he was traveling to Iran for another battle. He wasn't far from Damascus. So he was told that you do not need to go to Iran for any other battle. You need to move to Karbala and you need to have a battle with Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu and bring him dead or alive. Now because he was son of Sahabi, he had heard the fadail and the virtues of Hazrat Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala anhu as well as the virtues of Ahlul Bayt. So he made an excuse and he said, this battle is very important. I have already left. Why do you want me to come back? But he was told that if you will not come back, then anything that you were promised to be rewarded in terms of being the leader of certain places, you will not get, you will not get that. You need to go to Karbala. Now these people, they were the people of dunya. Being a Sahabi's son could not save him because his heart was corrupt. So he moved and started travel, traveling to Karbala. With him there were 4,000 people. And by the time he reached to Karbala, there were approximately 12,000 people against Sayyidina Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala. How many 12,000 people they had gathered against 72 men, among them young people who were 18 and 19 and 6 months old, Hazrat Sayyidina Ali Asghar radiallahu ta'ala. There was no comparison because Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala had no intention to have any kind of battle against these people. Now, when Ibn Sa'ad came to Karbala, Hati Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala had a meeting with him. And Hati Imam Ali Maqam, he gave him three conditions, three different ways. He said, Ibn Sa'ad, I'm not here to fight against Yazid or against you. I'm here to fulfill my promise and I'm here to travel to Kufa. But if this is going to bring bloodshed in the Ummah, then I have three different ways I'm going to tell you. The first thing, I've, I've come from Makkah al Mukarramah. Let me go back to Makkah al Mukarramah and there'll be no fight. I'll go in Makkah and live peacefully. If this is not possible, then any border area, I will go with my family and live peacefully. This was the way of Ahlul Bayt that they did not want to fight against anybody who pray Kalima. Those people who are with Yazid, at least they were praying Kalima. Their Iman or Kufr is not right now the topic. Hazrat Imam Ali Maqam did not want to fight. And the third condition he put, he said, if none of these two you agree upon, then let me go to Damascus. I will see Yazid, I will meet Yazid, and I'll deal with him directly. I do not want to deal with Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. I do not want to deal with Amr ibn Sa'ad. I want to deal directly with Yazid, just like my brother dealt with Hazrat Sayyidina Amir Muawiyah When Amr ibn Sa'ad, he saw this, 
he got little happy and he said I will not have to fight against the grandson of Rasulullah and if any of these conditions are agreed upon that will be the end of the story so he sent this to Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad when these conditions they reached to Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad at first Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad also thought that this is a good solution I might as well send her to Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu direct to Yazid and they can discuss the matter and they can resolve or they can come to the conclusion however in the Darbar of Ibn Ziyad there was a person known as Shimr now Shimr was a very greedy person and he told Ubaidullah Ibn Ziyad that if you listen to Imam Hussein what have you gained what will you gain from Yazid you will gain nothing because you will be shown as a weak leader therefore my advice is it looks like Amr ibn, Siyah, Amr ibn Sa'ad is sitting with her Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala the whole night and he is having conversations with him why don't you send me I will take my own people and I will fight against Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala now when greed gets to people they don't see who is in front of them who they are disrespecting who they are talking against or who they are raising their weapons against so Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad he gave commission, uh, permission to Shimr and he said you go and tell Amr ibn Sa'ad either you fight against Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu or give me the command and give Shimr the command and he will fight against Hadrat Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala when Shimr reaches at that time at the in the night of Muharram ul Haram 9th of Muharram at the night they inviting her to Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu and his people to fight it was the night time and the first thing when those people arrived in Karbala what they did from 7th of Muharram ul Haram they stopped a single drop of water going to the khema and tent of her to Sayyidina Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala they had they haven't had the water all three days on the night of 9th of Muharram they inviting those people who were who had nothing to eat they haven't drank a single drop of water they are inviting them to fight against 12,000 Yazidis her to Sayyidina Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu he went and he said that give us one night we want to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we want to remember our Lord and we want to spend our night in remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oh my dear brothers and sisters who have come to this blessed mahfil of the zikr of shohdai Karbala shohdai Karbala and those who participated in this battle even the night before their martyrdom they knew that tomorrow none of them will survive because there were 12,000 people they were thirsty for their blood but even that night they wanted to spend worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how many of us we claim to be the lovers of Ahl Bayt we claim to be the lovers of Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Ali Maqam Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala yet how many our first and obligatory salah we forget to pray and we miss deliberately Shahadati Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala and listening to the story of Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Ali Maqam Shahadat yes it does bring the sorrow as well as the love for the sacrifice that he gave for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and protecting the Sharia yet it also gives us the message that namaz is not forgiven <coughs> upon any believer in any situation if you are at work we, can, we cannot pray namaz that's the excuse if you are playing any any game of football in weekend the excuse is I do not have wuzu there is no place to pray salah this is how weak we have become this is not the way of her Sayyidina Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala her Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala the whole night and those people of Ahlul Bayt they spend that night 9th of Muharram worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the 10th of Muharram comes 
And there were people at night, even the 9th of Muharram. Hadith Sayyidina Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he gave the option to those who were with him. Because he knew that the people of Yazid, they do not want anyone. They want Hadith Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu. They want the blood of Hadith Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala. Hadith Imam Hussein, he said to his people, those who were in the tent, he said, that these people do not want your life. If you want to go back, any of you, there is nothing for you in my heart and you can leave during the darkness of night. But nobody wanted to leave Hirti Sayyidina Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala at that time. Likes of Hirti Muslim ibn Ausja, likes of Hirti Saad ibn Abdullah, and likes of Hirti Zuhair ibn, ibn Qin. All of them, they stood up and they said that, O oh, Imam, before anything happens to you, it is us who will defend you with our life and our blood. All of them were there for Hayat Sayyidina Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala. The 10th of Muharram comes. Hayat Sayyidina Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala. On one side there are 12,000 people. And then later, ulama they have mentioned that approximately 22,000 people with later coming people. They were against 72 of Ahl Bayt and their followers and their supporters. Hayat Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he goes in front of Yazidis on his horse and he makes a little speech and he tells them and reminds them after Hamd and Salah that, O oh people, think about my lineage. Who am I? I am the grandson of Rasulullah Ali Salatu Wasalam. And he tells them that I am the one that Rasulullah Ali Salatu Wasalam used to give his tongue to suck on. That's how I have spent my childhood. And then he said, Don't you remember that my mother is Khatun Jannat Bibi Fatima to Zahra radiallahu ta'ala anha? My father is Hadrat Sayyidina Ali Mushkil Kusha Shere Khuda radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he reminded. Yazidi is the fadail of Ahlul Bayt. But none of them had heart to accept the nasihat of Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala. Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala, he comes back. But one person who was there, he listens and he understands and he knew that which side he has to go. It was the first person who met Hadrat Imam Ali Maqam, Hur ibn Yazid. Before everyone else arrived, the one who was sent by Ibn Ziyad, when he heard the speech of Hadrat Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala, he comes forward with his horse. Yazidis thought that Hur is very brave. Before even the battle has started, Hur has come out to fight against Hadrat Imam Ali Maqam, Hadrat Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala. However, Hur comes to Hadrat Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala and he says that, Ya Imam, the grandson of Rasulullah Ali Salatu Wasalam, forgive me, I could not understand you then when you told me to let you go. I wish I had let you go then. But today, the least I can do is I can protect you with my life. Allah. Every Yazidi, they were looking at Hur. Hur was one of the commander of Ibn Ziyad's group. But Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, when He wants to change people's heart, when he wants to place the love of Ahlul Bayt in anyone's heart, this is how he does so. On the battlefield, Hur was the commander and he judged the situation better than anyone. He knew that on one side there are 12 to 22,000 people, on one side there are 72 people and I'm going to support those people who will be slaughtered soon and among those people who will be martyred, it will be me. But he also knew that one step of shahadat will take me into Jannah. Wow. One step closer to Hayat Sayyidina Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala anhu will take me close to paradise. And that is when he decided that he has to, with Hayat, he has to stay with Hayat Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala. Now Kufis, they were eager. They wanted to fight against Hayat Sayyidina Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala anhu and gain the reward from Yazid in terms of money and wealth and in terms of positions. 
the first person who started the battle, Amr ibn Sa'd, as I mentioned, the son of Sahabi, the Sahabi is from Ashari Mubashara, Hati Sa'd ibn Abi Waqas radiallahu ta'ala, one of those 10 Ashabi Rasul who were given the title of martyrs by, who were given the title of uh, Jannati by Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam. But his son, he tells all of those Yazidis, and he says to them, that be witness, I am the first one who is raising the arrow and shooting towards the tent of Imam Hussein. He was making people witness of his crime. The hideous crime that will be written and spoken about until the day of Qiyamah. And he's telling people to be witness of that. So he was the first one who started the battle and throw the arrow to the khaymah and tent of Hurti Sayyidina Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala anhu. When the jung started, the battle started, Hurti Hur, he comes to Hurti Sayyidina Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala. And he says that, Ya Imam, I was the one who stopped you from leaving the place. Now you give me the permission to go and fight against your enemies. <coughs> give me the permission to give the Nazrana of my life and sacrifice my life on the Ahli Bayt of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam. When Hur, he goes in the battlefield. Now people of Yazid, they knew how brave Hur was. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given him the bravery that he became the commander of Yazid's uh, army. But then he came to Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala. Now when he goes, hundreds of Yazidis, they were martyred, they were killed by Hur. And finally, Hadrat Hur also gives his life. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala. And it was the privilege of Hur that Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala who himself he carried Hur's body to the tent of Hurt Sayyidina Imam Ali Maqam and in the tents of Ahlul Bayt at Har. Many people after Hur, likes of Awladi Hadrat Sayyidina Aqil radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Hadrat Muslim bin Aqil radiallahu ta'ala his brothers, Hadrat Muslim bin Aqil who was martyred in Kufa, his brothers, they also gave the shahadat and they took allegiance on the hand of Sayyidina Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala anhu protecting him and they gave their lives. Hadrat Sayyidina Ali karamallahu ta'ala jhul kareem radiallahu ta'ala anhu's sons, they also gave their lives for the sake of Hurt Sayyidina Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And then Hurt Imam Hassan radiallahu ta'ala anhu's son, Hurt Qasim, he was only 18 and he was engaged with the daughter of Hurt Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Hurt Sakina radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Many people in Muharram they read uh, Marsiya. Marsiya is something that we don't do. It is not the way of Ahl Sunnati wa Jamaat. In their Marsiya, they mention that in Karbala, Ma'azallah, while Sayyid Qasim radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was getting ready to have a battle and fight against Yazidis. At that time, his nikah was done. This riwayat is mawzu and fabricated. It has no base in Ahl Sunnati wa Jamaat. And people also mention, Hurt Sakina radiallahu ta'ala anha's Mahdi, it was done in Karbala. Who is going to do Mahdi at the time when they having battle against their enemies? What kind of riwayat as a Sunni we have gone into? All of these are fabricated riwayat. Any sisters who are doing so, I would request them, this is not the way of Ahl Sunnati wa Jama'ah. Such gathering should not be, should not be conducted, nor those gatherings are the places where we go. Hayat Sayyidina Qasim radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he comes and he says that, Ya Imam, people who are from the outside of the family, they have given their lives. Hayat Hur, have, he has given his life protecting you. Why don't you give me ijazat and permission to go and fight against these Yazidis? Hayat Sayyidina Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu, with heavy heart, he says to him, that you are one of the nishani and sign of my brother, Hazrat Hassan. My brother was martyred in the most worst way possible and he was poisoned. How can I let you go and give you the permission 
to go in front of Yazidis when I know that you will be martyred. Hatisina Qasim insisted. And he said, Before me, I will not let you go, Ya Imam. I will give my life for you. Hatisina Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala who prepares Hatisina Qasim, his nephew, prepares for what? Prepares for the battle. They were taught by Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala. They were taught by Rasulullah alayhi salatu was salam. He prepares him. Hazrat Qasim radiallahu ta'ala when he goes in front of Yazidis, when they saw Hazrat Qasim, he looked just like Rasulullah alayhi salatu was salam. Every single Yazidi, they took a step back. As if they were seeing Rasulullah alayhi salatu was salam, and they had no courage to raise their swords in front of Hazrat Imam Qasim. Hazrat Imam Qasim radiallahu ta'ala invited the enemies that any of you have courage to come in front of me and fight against the ahl bayt One person whose name was Arzaq and he was very well known fighter. When Amr ibn Sa'ad he saw that Hazrat Qasim who is merely 18 he is inviting Yazidis to come in front. He says to Arzaq that why don't you go and fight? Arzak says, this is young, 18 years old. It is against my etiquette to fight against this young person. I cannot fight against this. My sons will fight. So he sends his four sons together. Hayat Sayyidina Qasim radiallahu ta'ala anhu. One after another, all four sons of Arzak, they were killed by Hayat Imam Qasim radiallahu ta'ala. And then Arzak saw that four of his sons were killed in front of his eyes. Arzak, full of anger, he goes in front of Hazrat Imam Qasim radiallahu ta'ala. And he talks about how courageous he was. In Arabic, there are some words that are, which are written. When he talks about it, Hazrat Imam Qasim radiallahu ta'ala, he tells him that you are praising yourself so much, but look how you are sitting and how your saddle is. You can't even... You can't even sit properly and look at your saddle. It is not even right. And you are such a fighter. When he bows down to look at his saddle, Hayat Imam Qasim radiallahu ta'ala who quickly attacks on Urzak and he was also killed. These are one of the etiquettes of fight. That when your enemy is in front of you, you can deceive them and you can kill them. Because you are fighting for the sake of Allah and to protect the Sharia of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam. Now Hayat Qasim when Yazidis, they saw the bravery of Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Qasim ibn Hassan radiallahu ta'ala who from all sides instead of one by one they attacked Hazrat Imam Qasim radiallahu ta'ala who he was injured really badly he comes to Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala who and he says Ya Abata Adrikni Oh my father in other words Oh my uncle help me Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala who he brings Hayat Imam Qasim radiallahu ta'ala anhu who was severely wounded and he was bleeding into the tent and in front of Hayat Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala anhu his nephew Hayat Sayyidina Imam Qasim radiallahu ta'ala anhu he gives his life protecting the sharia of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon as we know that for three days the people of Ahlul Bayt they haven't had a single drop of water. Among there, there were women, and among there, a young child likes of Hayat Sayyidina Ali Asghar radiallahu ta'ala. Hayat Qasim, he gave his life. Now Hayat Sayyidina Abbas, he comes to Hayat Imam Ali Maqam, and he says, Ya Imam, I cannot see the thirst of Ahl Bayt and those people who are in the tent. They are young and old. Every single one of them are thirsty. I cannot see that. Give me the permission to go to Furat and bring water for Ahl Bayt. Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala who says to him that Abbas, you are the one who is holding the alam and jinda and flag of Ahlul Bayt today. If today you are martyred, then who will be, the, who will be carrying the flag of Ahl Bayt? Hayat Sayyidina Abbas radiallahu ta'ala who he insisted Hayat Imam Ali Maqam gives him the permission, makes dua for him. Hayat Sayyidina Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was very brave and he was experienced. With his bravery, 
he carries the leather bag to bring the water, climbs on his horse, and with speed he goes to Furat, killing many on his way. He reaches to Furat. When he, when he gets close to Furat, he thinks of drinking the water. But again, in his mind, what comes? Ahle Bayt in the tent, they are thirsty. Whilst those children are thirsty, how can I drink water? Hati Abbas who does not drink a single drop of water, carries the water and travels back to the tent of Hati Sayyidina Imam Ali Maqam. Yazidis knew that if Abbas reaches with the water to the tent, then many more Yazidis and thousands of them, they will be killed if Ahl Bayt gets water and gets some courage and himmat. Therefore, they started to shoot arrows at Hazrat Sayyidina Abbas People get close to Hazrat Abbas. One of the Yazidis, he cut the right arm of Hazrat Abbas And the other one cuts the left arm of Hazrat Abbas He was carrying that bag in his mouth. When he gets close to the tent near Hazrat Imam Ali Maqam there was not a single drop of water left in that bag. Hati Abbas who was almost leaving from this dunya and in the arm of Hati Sayyidina Imam Ali Maqam who he departed from this dunya Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un Imagine the pain and the difficulty and the sorrow of Hati Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala in front of him all of these people who were very dear and very close to him they left this dunya. Hati Ali Akbar, a son of Hati Sayyidina Imam Ali Maqam, who was 18, he comes. And he says, that, Oh Father, everybody had given their lives. It is my turn now. There is no one left in the tent. It is my turn. Let me go. Hati Sayyidina Imam Ali Maqam, ta'ala anhu, he also prepares Hati Sayyidina Ali Akbar, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Sayyidina Ali Akbar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He goes with the sword of Sayyidina Ali karamallahu ta'ala wajhul kareem. With the imama of Hati Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu. As if Hati Imam Hussain in the young age has gone to the field of uh, Karbala. In front of Yazidis. Yazidis do not see who is coming in front of them. They do not think that this is the son of Hati Sayyidina Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala Hati Ali Akbar radiallahu ta'ala who bravely fights and he also gives his life for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hati Sayyidina Ali Asghar radiallahu ta'ala he was very young. Hati Shaharbanu says to Hati Imam Hussain, why don't you take this young child? Ask Yazidis to give some water. They may have some mercy upon this child because he hasn't done anything wrong to Yazidis. Hati Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala who he takes his son Hati Sayyidina Ali Asghar who was barely six months old in his lap carrying him in front of Yazidis he says to them that this child hasn't done anything wrong to you don't give me any water why don't you give water to Hati Ali Asghar radiallahu ta'ala but Yazidis had left no raham in their hearts a person called Hurmala shoots at Hazrat Sayyidina Ali Asghar radiallahu ta'ala whose throat the arrow goes in the throat of Hazrat Sayyidina Ali Asghar radiallahu ta'ala and there and then Hazrat Sayyidina Ali Asghar radiallahu ta'ala who was barely six months old give, gives his life for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Hazrat Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala had seen the shahadat of his nephew he has seen the shahadat and martyrdom of his own son who was 18 years old. And now he saw the shahadat of his young child who was barely six months old. And he raises Hati Sayyidina Ali Asghar to the sky. And he says, O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, today I have given the shahadat of my youngest child who is accepted by you today. And he praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the words of Alhamdulillah. Now, there is no one left. Hati Sayyidina Imam Zainul Abideen. He stands up and he says that everybody, they went and fought for you. 
You gave permission to Ali Akbar. He also fought for you. Now it is my turn. Give me the permission so I can fight for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Zainul Abidin who was known as Ali Awsat as well. He was very ill at that time. He couldn't even stand up because of the severe fever that he had. Hati Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala and who said to him that if today you will be martyred, then the nasl of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam, how is it going to go ahead? The lineage of Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam will be run by you. Who is going to look after these khawateen and female of Ahlul Bayt if today you are also martyred? Hati Imam Ali Maqam does not give him permission. He makes him lie down on the bed in the tent. And Sayyidina Imam Ali Maqam prepares himself to battle and fight against Yazidis. Yeah. Now imagine Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala who was told that only one thing we demand from you. Accept Yazid as the Khalifa and that is it. Every single thing that you ask for you will be given. You want to be the governor of any city or any place, you'll be given so. But Hazrat Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was raised by Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam. He was raised by Sayyidina Ali karramallahu ta'ala ajhul kareem. He was raised by Hazrat Khatun al-Jannat radiallahu ta'ala anha. He knew that giving hand in the hands of tyrant and corrupt person is not the tradition of Ahlul Bayt. Giving the head is better than giving the hand. Sayyidina, Imam Ali Maqam does not bow down in front of tyrants. Even after looking at the shahadat of his children, looking at the shahadat of his nephews, looking at the shahadat of those who came with him, every single one of them they were martyred, except those khawateen and Sayyidina Imam Zainul Abidin radiallahu ta'ala. Sayyidina Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala anhu, now he prepares. When he goes in front of Yazidis, Again, he gives them a chance. He reminds them who he was. He tells them what was the virtue of the family of Rasulullah And he said to them, every single thing that had done so far, there is still tawbah from that. Even if you go back now, O Yazidis, on the day of Qiyamah, I will intercede in front of Rasulullah for you. But they were bloodthirsty. They were people and the followers of Yazid and they wanted money and they were in utmost greed at that time. Ibn Sa'd, he said to Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Ali Maqam ta'ala that today there is no deal. The only deal is give your hand in the hand of Yazid and that is the deal or else prepare for fight. Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Ali Maqam ta'ala he fights bravely in front of these Yazidis. Many of them they were slaughtered and sent to the hell by Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala. But one arrow comes on the forehead of Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala. Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala, he comes down from his horse. When he comes down from his horse, Yazidis get together and attacks on the body of Sayyidina Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala. One of the Yazidi whose name was Khawli, he gets close and he takes out his sword and he separates the blessed head of Sayyidina Imam Ali Maqam from his blessed body. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. The promise of Prophet Ali Salatu Wasalam that this grandson of mine will be martyred in Karbala. This grandson of mine will be martyred by Ummatis who will pray my kalima. That promise was fulfilled in the field of Karbala. Hayat Sayyidina Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala who gave his life for the sake of Allah protecting the Sharia of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam. But the interesting thing is when Yazidis, they martyred Hayat Sayyidina Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala who they take the head of Hayat Sayyidina Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala but they could not take the hand of Hayat Imam Hussein. They left the body of Hayat Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala Without the head, imagine the difficulty on the female of Ahlul Bayt, the wives of Hayat Sayyidina Imam Hussein His son 
Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Zainul Abidin radiyallahu ta'ala at the end the next day Yazidis they bury every single Yazidi who were killed in that battle they leave the bodies of <laughs> Ahlul Bayt and those who were martyred with Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Hussein radiyallahu ta'ala in the open field of Karbala not only that they use their horses to tarnish the bodies of Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Hussein radiyallahu ta'ala these Yazidis with what face they will face Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam on the day of Qiyamah. How they are going to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after this greatest zulm on the Ahlul Bayt on the day of Qiyamah. The shahadat of Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala when we mention every single year it reminds us about the steadfastness on the Sharia. It reminds us to stand up against those who are tyrant. It reminds us about looking after the boundaries of Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam. It is not merely the story to get together and listen to it and then wait for the next Muharram. The story should be remembered every day. The steadfastness of Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala anhu. It should be remembered every single day of life and obey the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala anhu did. The final sajda of Hazrat Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu was in the state of when he was injured, when he was about to depart from this dunya, it was on the soil of Karbala. That is how he departed from this dunya and left the message for Ummah that no matter what, you cannot apart yourself from, your, from the obligations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed upon you. As Ahlul Sunnah, we believe that Shah Astu Hussain, Baad Shah Astu Hussain, Sardad Nadad, Dast Dar Dast Yazid, Haq Aake Binai La Ila Astu Hussain. This is our Aqeedah that Shaheed, they are alive in their graves, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them the spiritual life that we cannot understand. The time of Maghrib is about to come. I would like to thank each and every individual, the sisters, the brothers and those who listen to this program for 10 days in their houses. I thank you all from the depth of my heart on behalf of the Islamic Center and the Management Council. Every single individual who took part in the niyaz, we thank you all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you, whether you donated for the niyaz, whether you prepared the niyaz, those brothers who served the sabile Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Sabil of Shuhadai Karbala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the wasila of Sayyidina Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala anhu reward you immensely. Inshallah after the namaz there will be dua as well as khatam sharif. So please stay behind straight after faraiz. Inshallah we'll do collective dua in these blessed, uh, in the was with the wasila of these blessed mahafil. Those who are fasting. There is khajur and uh, iftari prepared for you outside. Jazakumullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.